Hi, my name is Melissa Druskis. I'm a board certified behavior analyst, and today I'm going to show you how to create an electronic data entry system using Google Forms. We will go over how to create client specific forms, export data to program graphs, and update forms for new programs and targets. Why are we doing this? Well, typically what I would do is collect all the data forms from my RBTs and spend about five to 10 hours per week just typing in all of those percentages to Excel. By using this system, the RBTs will enter all of their percentages into the Google form, and all you're going to have to do is copy and paste that information to your program graphs. You will still need to review the data sheets to make sure that people are calculating percentages correctly, but that does take a substantial amount of time off of the work that you're doing each week. And here we are at Google Forms. You can find this by just doing a Google search for Google Forms and signing into your Gmail account. Here you can see that there are a variety of different forms that you can use, but for our purposes, we're going to start with a blank form. The title of the form, you'll want it to be the client's initials. You don't want to put any client specific information in here, such as their date of birth or their full name, because this is not secure enough under HIPAA standards. So just make sure you don't have any identifying information. Before we get started, let's look at the variety of questions that we can have in a Google form. You can use short answer, which we will be using a lot of, paragraphs, multiple choice, check boxes, drop downs, linear scales, which is like a rating scale of one to 10, a multiple grid, a date, and the time. Google Forms has sections. You can have one section here, another section here. We will be using this, but a good thing to keep in mind is that this is how it's going to look to the therapist. This will be the first page, and then they'll have to hit next to go to the second page. So it's important to keep this format in mind as you're creating your questions. So we're gonna delete this because right now we're just working on page one. And page one is going to be all of the basic information that you need about that session. So our first question is going to be the date. Let's add a question. And this will be the therapist. So you'll want to add all of the therapists that see that client right here. And if you don't know who those people are, I suggest you use your extra 10 hours a week to watch Game of Thrones. So let's say that we have somebody else that is seeing this client, maybe as a coverage visit, you want to add an other option. This means that that person can just type in their name and then you'll know who it is. The next thing that we'll want to add is the time. There are two different ways that you can do this. You can select time from here, and you can have a start time. And we're gonna duplicate this. And an end time. So therapists can add 12 o'clock to two o'clock, and that's their session time. Another way that you can do it is by having the therapist enter the total time. For total time, we want a short answer and we want to add a description and a data validation because we want to make sure that they're not typing in text when we want to know the time. The description is just a short description of what you want the answer to be. And then the data validation shows that you can have certain lengths, text, or number, and we want it to be a number. We don't care what the number is, we just need it to be a number. And then they can enter their answer in here. So I particularly like this one the best, but for now, I'll leave them both in there. The last thing that we'll want to know on this basic information sheet is the session type. This might not apply to all of your kids, but I have some kids that are seen in the clinic 
while that same kid has a social group as well, and there would be different goals for the social group versus the clinic session. And you can also add other, so in case you have a community session or something different in there, you could type that in. And since this is all the basic information we need, we want to make all of these questions required. So the therapist has to answer them. Now we'll want to add another section. This section is going to be for clinic session data. Here in the clinic session data, there are some notes that you might want to add. So under the description, I'm going to describe when they should include a score and when they should not. We can also add text here if we want to include additional information. You just click on the letter here and this will add a text box. And I include that information on all of my Google Forms, but you can include client specific information on there as well. Now let's add our programs. All of our programs are going to be questions that are short answers. And we are going to want a description and a data validation for every one. So once I make this first program, I'm going to just duplicate it repeatedly until I have all of our programs. The description can be how you want it scored, or again, it could be client-specific information. And again, you want the number to make sure that it is a number. So I'm going to copy this several times so that we have enough for five programs. If you have a program that has multiple targets, you can either write prepositions target one, or what I prefer is to actually include what the target is. Now you'll have to go in and change that every time the target changes, but then you have less confusion with your therapist of which one should be entered where. And now we have all of our programs entered and I have one extra one, so I can delete that. You want to make sure that you do not make any of these required or else they won't be able to go on to the next sheet and we want to make sure that they don't enter a zero if they didn't target the program. So we're going to go to the next section. The next section is going to be clinic behavior data. And here you're going to enter in all of the behaviors that you're tracking. You can choose to have your therapist either enter it as a frequency per the whole session and you can calculate the rate per hour or you can just have them enter the rate per hour which is what we're going to do for this example. And now we're going to add a question the same way that we did up here. It's going to be a short answer and we want to make sure that we have a data validation, but on these I don't typically add a description. You can if you want to. And again, we're going to duplicate that for all of the behaviors that we're tracking. And we're going to add one final question, which is going to ask if you have any social data to enter. Now we're going to enter our next section, which is social data. This is going to be just like the clinic data that we entered, except it will be for social group data. So I'm gonna go through and copy all of the notes that I put in the clinic session data over to the social group data, and then enter all the programs just like we did for this one.
And now we're going to add our last section, which is going to be the social group behavior data. It is going to be exactly the same as our clinic behavior data. And now we've entered all of our behaviors that we're tracking as well as, as all of our programs. So let's take a look at what our Google form looks like right now. So you can click preview and then you can go to the live form. You can also do these on your phone. So it'll be really easy for your therapist to do this while they're with a client. So let's put the date. and I'm selecting clinic session and we'll pretend that this is just a clinic session. So one thing that I don't like already is I don't want to add a start time, end time, and put the total time. That's a bit redundant, so when we edit this, I'm going to remove these right here. And you can choose which one you want, but you definitely don't need both of these. And now we can see all of our notes that we entered at the beginning. It's very clear and nobody should be able to miss those. Everything looks good here. I'm not actually going to enter any data. Behavior data looks good as well. Let's say that no, I don't have social data to enter. Well now the problem is is that it still took me to social group data. If your therapists only have clinic data to enter, it's still going to take them through all of these other session types. So we're gonna to want to fix that. And I'm gonna go in and delete my response because I don't want that in there. So let's start making those changes that we saw. Start time and end time, I don't want those. So I'm gonna delete them. And then to make sure that you don't have to go through all of the session types just to enter the data for one session type, we are going to add go to section based on answer. So if you select that you have clinic data to enter, then you're gonna to go to clinic session data. If you have social group, we're gonna select that you just go right to the social group data, and then you'll skip the clinic session data. And then when I entered this question down here, it's going to be the same thing. Go to section based on answer. If yes, that you do have social data to enter, then you can go to that section. If not, then we want you to be able to submit the form. So let's go through that again and preview the form and actually enter some data this time. And now that I selected no and we made those changes, it just takes me to the end of the form to submit it. I'm going to submit a few more responses so that we can see what it looks like when we export the data from the spreadsheet to our program graphs. Now that we've submitted a bunch of data, let's actually see what our form looks like. So when you click on responses, this will give you just a quick breakdown of the dates that the client was seen, the therapist that saw the client, and then just some other general information. But this isn't that useful to us, so we want to look at the spreadsheet. So you click on this button right here, which is create a spreadsheet. And right now the form is titled untitled, but if you give the form a name, it will come up with the form's name right here. So let's just create an untitled form response. So we have the timestamps of when we entered all of this information, the dates, the therapist, total time, basically all of the information that we want. So now let's take a look at our program graphs. We have all of the same programs that we put into our form, 
and all of it is in the same order, which is very important if you just want to copy and paste it over. But all of this information is going vertically, and the program that's over here, everything is going horizontally. So we need to do something to fix that. We're going to add a sheet, and in A1 right here, you're going to type equal transpose and then go to form one and then just select this empty cell between a1 and that's going to select everything close the parentheses and you're going to hit shift enter it does not work if you don't hit shift enter by doing that you're saying that it's an array and it's going to make sure to transpose everything that is in that sheet so now we have everything lined up exactly how we want it to be. Now we can just copy the data over. So we don't need the timestamp either, but going from date to total time, we're gonna control C and control V. I'm not doing it for all of them because this is clinic data and I don't want the social group data on my clinic data page. And let's just put it this way so you can see both of them. And now we're going to copy this and this over here. So very easily we have all of our information copied over to our form. I copied this one wrong. I didn't get this first cell right here. I'm just going to go over and recopy that. And now for our social data, you want to go to your social data tab and same thing that you did on the clinic data side. You can just copy and paste all of this information over. And now instead of spending hours actually typing in all of that from your data sheets that you're looking at, you just copied it over really quickly. Now one thing else that we want to look at is how do we update this if we have a new program or a new target. So let's pretend that we want to add a new program. So we will go down here and add a question. And actually, we don't need to add a question, we can just duplicate this. Say we're going to add action tact. But on the data sheet that our RBTs have, it is under follow instructions, it's not at the end. So we want to make sure that all of this is in the same order as the program that our RBTs have, just so it's easier to enter it in. So we've added our new program. It's between follow instructions and prepositions in front. Now if we go to responses and look at our data sheet, let's see where it is. We have respond to name, follow instruction, preposition, so it's not where it's supposed to be. They actually add it to the very end of the data sheet. So that is not useful when you're trying to just copy and paste everything over. So what we want to do is go to those three circles there. You want to unlink the form, which means that it is no longer going to link to that spreadsheet. And now you want to link it to a new form. So create a new spreadsheet. To make sure it doesn't use the same one, I'm going to put today's date at the end. And now our new program is exactly where it should be. It has no data for previously because it wasn't targeted before, but now if we enter in data, it will be right in the same spot and you can just copy and paste it over. Hopefully this will save you a lot of time as you're doing your data reviews. If you have any questions about this, please feel free to put it in the comments and let me know. Thank you. Thank you for watching my video. Don't forget to visit my website at www.adcbehaviortx.com. 
Here you will find resources including templates and other videos, my ABA blog covering a wide range of topics for parents and therapists, as well as information on my other services including distance supervision and parent consultation.